Hey guys, I'm Kai from Lucas Land and Royals. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be doing another DIY build, but it's not a snake rack. This one is a stand for a vivarium or a terrarium, and the dimensions are uh, 36 by 18 footprint. So let's get started. Alright, so what I've done is I made the most accurate measurements I could on the terrarium. The length is 35 and 3 fourths, which I rounded up by 1 quarter, making that 36. The width is 18 and a quarter, and I've also rounded that up, making it 18 and a half. And the reason I added a quarter to both of these to get these is just to make sure I have enough clearance. I don't have the terrarium here with me, and the last thing I want to happen is bring the stand over to my friend and then it not fit. So the height of the stand, we're gonna make that 28. Typically it's between 28 and 30. Because the terrarium is pretty tall, I think keeping the height a little bit on the low end would help viewing. And what I've also done, I'm gonna be using two by three lumber. So what I've also done here is I've marked out or taken measurements and calculated how I want to cut the lumber to minimize any um, minimize the, the, the scraps. So I'm going to take four pieces of lumber and I'm going to cut a section of 36, a section of 18 and a half, and a section of 28. So I'm going to do that to all four pieces. And then one piece of the lumber, I'm going to cut three pe uh, four pieces of 23 inch. And I'll show you what to do with the 23 inches later. So now let's go to Home Depot and grab some wood. I like to go to Home Depot for my lumber because they have the cheapest price. What you do have to do when picking any lumber from any store is to inspect each piece, making sure that they're not curved or bowed or twisted. And you just look down one end, making sure that it's true. So the next thing is to get the lumber out of the garage and get to work. I used five pieces of two by three by 96 inch lumber and these are the scraps so you can see there's not much waste. What we now have are four pieces of 36 inch lumber, four pieces of 23 inch lumber, four pieces of 18 and a half lumber, and four pieces of 28 inch lumber. And I have some extras from the store as well, just in case I need it, but I didn't have to use them. I start forming what's going to be the top and the bottom of the stand. And it's at this point I realized something was off. At this point, I grabbed my measuring tape and confirmed the issue. Now when fitting those pieces together, I realized I made a rookie mistake. 18 and a half is the total width, so the lumber that I have to cut needs to account for the thickness of the other pieces. So therefore I have to subtract 3 inches, making it 15 and a half. So all I did was go back and cut those 4 pieces down by 3 inches. Now with those 4 pieces cut down to 15 and a half, I can start assembling what's going to be the top and the bottom of the stand.
Now to start, I'm only putting one screw at each corner, and this is going to allow me to make adjustments if needed. It'll also give me a little bit of wiggle room just in case I make a mistake. Once I'm happy with the way it's sitting, I'll go back and add more screws. Now to make sure these frames are square, I just have to measure from corner to corner. As long as the two diagonals have the same length, that means it's square. Now it's time to install the uprights. And again, I'm only putting one screw at each corner until I like the way it fits. Then I go back and add more screws. Now that I have one frame affixed to the vertical post, I'll just flip the entire unit over and work to fasten the other frame to the vertical post as well. Remember I cut these four 23 inch pieces. So now I'm gonna show you what they're used for. Okay, so the reason why we need these pieces is they go in here and acts as this additional support. So without these, the weight of the terrarium will be sitting on screws, which is fine. The screws can hold up plenty of weight, but just as an added precaution, we're gonna put these in. like that and then this way the weight of the terrarium will be distributed across the top frame and then down through these pieces and to the floor. Now at this point I can add more screws to increase the rigidity of the frame. As you can see, there are seven screws at each corner. So now here is the frame all assembled. All the screws are in. All the supports are mounted. As you can see, this thing is an absolute beast. The other reason I have these corner pieces is so that when I put the front and the side panels on, I will have something to nail on. So you're probably wondering how much weight this thing can hold. Why well, I use the same design to build fish tank stands. And something like this with a footprint of 36 by 18. And if the height was 24, that holds roughly 65 gallons of water. And that equates to over 770 pounds. So I'm pretty sure this can hold a vivarium or a terrarium. I think it'll hold. 
So here I have a sheet of plywood. It's just a quarter inch thick and I'm going to use this to form the front and the side panels of the stand. So how I'm going to rip this is I'm going to need one piece that is 36 by 28 and that'll be the front and the other piece it'll be 18 and a half yes 18 and a half not 15 and a half this time 18 and a half by 28 those are going to form the two side panels so I'm going to go ahead and rip that down So now that those pieces are cut, they're over there, three panels that I have to attach to the frame with a few brads. So I'm going to have to pause here because I am losing light and it is getting a little bit late but I think it's really starting to take shape. Uh, in the next video I will be putting in a opening for a door, installing the trim and painting it. So to make sure you get notified of that video make sure you're subscribed, hit that notification bell. If you enjoy this video give me a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.